is it worth it to build a 12 and a half inch six arc as far as performance goes? Yes. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Wade here as always. Uh, today we're gonna take a look at another uh, AR-15 build. This is the Noveski build as I've taken the calling in because it's quite a few of Noveski parts. Well, three in particular, but four. So the, at its core, this is a SBR, short barreled rifle. This is a 12 and a half inch, six millimeter arc. It, you know, of course it's a six millimeter arc is what, probably what you're saying to yourself, but this was a, uh, I don't know why I didn't build one before this. And you know, I kind of just, I, I kind of labeled it as in the 14.5 is gonna be like the lowest, the shortest I would go. But there's so many people asking about 12.5, 14.5 and everything else. So I went ahead and built a 12.5. I had previously shot, I think it's Fitzy has a 12.5, six arc. Uh, liked the performance and tested some of our ammo through it. And it was kind of like, it wasn't that big of a deal on our radar at the time, but you know, as far as answering the question, is it worth it to build a 12.5? It, really, it comes down to, is it worth it to you? I am not a fan of pistol braces. I've SBR'd quite a few rifles at this point, the shorter ones. Or if you can get the correct muzzle device that you want, pin and welded, I would definitely recommend going that route. Pistol braces just don't offer me the, the correct cheek weld and ability to ride a bag that I want. Also, they just got off a look at it. But then, you know, that's not what this video is about. It's about the build. We're talking about the specs, how it shoots and everything else. Cause I have, I got about 253 rounds of this. Again, for some reason, I always forget those notes, but it's kind of, if I recall correctly off the top of my head, it's kind of right around there. I've used this quite a bit, intend on using it for hunting quite a bit. I have killed a couple pigs with it by now. Uh, is it worth it to build a 12 and a half inch six arc as far as performance goes? Yes, uh, you can still with the right ammo, with the correct ammo, you can still plink out the long range with this. I mean, it's totally fine out to a thousand yards. And again, depending on the ammo and everything else, it'll still stay within that velocity threshold, meaning it doesn't drop into the transonic range until, uh, again, depending on the ammo, the projectile and everything else, a, a sub a thousand or just after a thousand. It, again, it's, there's a lot of variables uh, within my you know, standards and everything else. It's totally fine for a thousand yard plinker, which it also makes it super cool. Like it's a 12 and a half inch thousand yard rifle. Super cool. From a hunting standpoint, there's always gonna be huge benefits with getting shorter platforms for maneuverability, a truck rifle, if you will, uh, sitting in deer stands. This is something that gets overlooked quite a bit still this day by a lot of hunters, and that is the, the value of having an AR-15 for a deer hunting rifle, especially for kids. And you know, this may, AR-15s may not be your cup of tea, and there are also, there are uh, negative benefits. We've talked about this in the podcast before, to having an AR-15, meaning people tend to just start shooting rather than aiming. But you can train those things out. You can also, like, I don't know, uh, limit the amount of rounds that are in the magazine at, at, the, at the time. Like, that, that can be, if it's really that big of an issue, you could definitely fix that issue with that. But again, the, to, for me, the biggest benefit to having an AR-15 for a kid's hunting rifle is the fact that I can collapse the buttstock, giving them the correct length of pull and cheek weld, and I could quickly just run that buttstock back out, making it adequate for myself, say if I need to take over, you know. The, the situations arise while hunting. Kids sometimes will get super excited, well adults will too, but kids will sometimes get super excited and pull a shot and make a bad shot. Well, sometimes you just need to take over the rifle and go ahead and dispatch the animal. Or if you just have money for one rifle, but you really wanna build a rifle that's uh, better fitting for your children, Look at an AR-15. It's very easy to collapse the buttstock, giving you a shorter length of pull, making it more appropriate for a smaller frame child or a smaller frame person such as a child. And the six millimeter arc is the perfect candidate for said AR-15 cartridge that you're gonna be using for deer hunting, pig hunting, coyote hunting, plinking, everything else. Enough on that. We've talked about that at nauseam. Everybody's like, let's get to the build specs, whatever. You know. I'm not trying to sell it to you, I'm just trying to tell you like it is a very valuable option, especially 
in the deer woods where majority of the shots 200 yards in the end. It's, even running the 108 grain uh, projectiles on this rifle, it's still carrying enough energy and velocity and everything else. It, you know, I say energy, but I don't care about energy so much as I do velocity. It carries more than enough velocity to dispatch a deer at 100, 200 yards. More than enough, and it's actually further than that, but I'm not gonna trigger some of you by talking about that. But anyways, let's get to the build. And at its core, it is based off of Noveski upper and lower in a Noveski barrel and a Noveski BCG. But we're gonna start at the buttstock and move away this way, you know, unless I just decide to go off on tan just like I normally do. Starting with the buttstock, we do have the Magpul MOE PR stock. Now, I've talked about this in previous videos a lot. This is the newest, one of the newer Magpul stocks, and I really like it because it's very minimalist, but it also gives you the ability to ride a bag. They ha are, however, and maybe by the time this video even drops, I may already have one. They're coming out with another version of this that locks up a little bit tighter. Obviously, it's gonna be more expensive, but it's gonna be that much better. So keep that in mind. So we are, I did opt out to go ahead and do a A5 uh, buffer system. This is the BCM Mark II A5 with the T2 buffer weight. Spring is whatever came with the buffer system from BCM. Yeah, I don't know. It's just the spring that came with the A5 buffer system. I am running, I believe, I could have I, I potentially wrote down the wrong company, and if I do, someone correct me. It's the Ratcheting Castle Nut System. Uh, I believe it's PWS. I used my last one on this build, and I didn't have a package left over, and I forgot to write down the brand. So if I miss mispronounce that or misstate that, let me know in the comments. It is, everybody knows it's the Ratcheting uh, Castle Nut, or a receiver extension nut, whatever, if you want to be that kind of a nerd. So moving forward from there, we have a, like I said, the Noveski N4 upper and lower receiver set, which everybody loves Noveski. And we did stick the sucker in the laser engraver and have some fun with it. Now, some people are like, oh my God, but you know, it's my stuff, I don't care. I wanted to have fun with it, it's my gun. Uh, Noveski is known for their quality of products. So we know we have a high quality upper and lower for, for what it is, it's AR-15. We are riding a Radian Raptor SD charge handle. That is the gas defeating charge handle. It's going to pull a slight amount of gas away from your face. It's to me, you're gonna you're gonna have to have you're gonna have to have a charge handle. You might as well get something that's gonna aid a little bit wherever you can. So that's why I choose that one. Just about every one of my suppressed AR-15s, which every one of my AR-15s is suppressed. So take that for what it's worth. I am running a. Magpul dust cover. Everybody knows I'm, I'm into the tans, greens, blacks, and all that kind of stuff, spray paint sometimes, but I kind of like the fact that the, the port cover, or the dust cover, if you will, match the scope pretty good and match the suppressor pretty good. But I will say this, I will be replacing this with just a generic metal one that I've painted, or Cerakoted, or Duracoated, whatever it's called, because this one doesn't exactly work properly with the Noveski upper and lower. It will work. But it does, when you pull back on the charge handle, here I can probably get it to replicate right now. Pull back on the charge handle, it didn't open up, did it? Now, when that round kicks out, it's definitely going to open on the way up, but it don't exactly, it's not really meant for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back with the metal one, it's gonna be fine, although this has been totally fine to, to this point. But anyways, moving forward, side note there. I am running a Trigger Tech Duty Trigger. This is a flat shoe. You've heard me talk about them, the, the drop-in Trigger Techs. It's been fantastic. The Duty Trigger for the money, it's like 135 bucks. It's a fantastic straight three pound uh, AR trigger, drop-in cassette style AR trigger, whatever you wanna call it. The cool thing about the uh, Trigger Techs, and I'm sure there are other triggers out there that um, run this same type of technology, is it has set screws. So a lot of times when you do these drop-in cassette style triggers, what everybody calls them, which is basically everything's housed underneath one package instead of that fumbly bullshit you have to deal with when you get a Geisley. The cool thing about the trigger text that has those set screws, you don't have to buy aftermarket pins. What happens is when you, uh, you know, pin the trigger, you dial in them set screws and it forces it up to where the pins can't walk out, which is probably a lot of the reason why people didn't like cassette style triggers to begin with. But another side tangent. Anyways, moving forward, I am running the Badger safety selector on this, and I'm only running the, uh, the off-side safety. This is just like an indicator. It, it, 
they came out with them. It's kind of cool factor because it's got a little red paint on it. I'll probably go ahead and end up putting the other side safety selector on because I find myself, when it's a more precision style AR, which the, an argument could be had, this is kind of like a cross between, I find myself utilizing this side because I ride my thumb on the outside, even though it is an AR for a more precision style of shooting. That gets kind of annoying not having the safety selector on this side just the indicator and then the badger little badger safety selector kit came with the ability to remove that or install it so i tried it out without it. i tried it out without it and i don't like it so again side note so again we have the badger safety selector i have a choi ambi mag release on this side uh, i don't know how you feel about troy industries or anything like that i don't really care it was an ambi uh, mag release so i went with it <laughs> it's, it's literally that simple. And it also, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip us around here so you don't potentially see that. So I'm gonna look like a goon. So nowadays, a lot of these uh, bigger paddles for the boat release and the Ambi mag release stuff, sometimes you, you will see like when you mix and match companies, there's a little bit of interference between the two. I really like the way this one laid out. Now this is, I'm pretty sure I could be could be wrong. I'm pretty sure this is a Seekins uh, paddle for the, the boat release, whereas this is a Troy Industries uh, Ambi mag release. So I really like the way it's separated, like that separated layout. Now that's why I try, I try a lot of different stuff on some of these builds, even though I have my favorites. Like obviously the boat release, my favorite is clearly the Maritime boat catch from uh, Geisley. But I wanted to try the layout between these two components. And again, I'm, I'm, a lot of times I'm testing this stuff for the store. What components, building components, what should we carry for people? And what makes sense to, to put together on these things? And so far, I mean, I've had zero issues. Now, I will be, however, even though it's not that big of an issue, this is a hunting rifle. It's, not a, it's a hunting plinking rifle. It's not a tactical rifle. I much very much prefer the uh, Magpul extended mag release just because it's more it's it's more better for myself i will be adding that i don't have it on right now but just again side note so moving forward from there we are running duramag you know i've tested a, a smorgasbord of different magazines well i say that i've tested a brenton brenton i believe is how you pronounce their name sorry i've always messed it up the geisley and the duramag they all function in this lower properly and as you can tell, a pretty uh, aggressive looking flared magwell for all you tactical boys with your fast reloads and what have you. Uh, just a little added benefit of running quality Noveski parts. Uh, I don't remember the takedown pins. Either they came with the, the receiver set, because this is a paired receiver set, or I bought some matching Noveski ones. I don't remember. We do have the Magpul K2 pistol grip. This is not the K2 XL. This is just the generic K2. Perfect. These are in whatever Magpul's green color is. Moving forward from there, uh, we'll talk about the optics package real fast. Most of you already know what this is. This is the, opti the Eleanor optics package and with the uh, Aimpoint Acro P2 atop here. Uh, this is the Eleanor. This is the most badass one in 10 on the planet right now, just saying. So moving forward from there, we have a this is where shit got a little tricky. <laughs> this is where I had some issues with the build, self brought on admittedly. I never once stopped and looked at the handguard fitment to the Noveski upper. It's a no go, Jack. So I started like shopping around and I wanted, I really wanted a Noveski handguard uh, to be completely honest with you. I wanted to, I was originally gonna go with a total different theme on this one which was a uh, tan and black. I had tan uh, uh, accoutrements and a tan handguard. And when the handguard I had purchased was not going to work, I was like, oh, well, shit. So I started looking around, but at the same time, I was actually messing with a 18-inch Geisley rifle uh, build in 6 millimeter arc. And I had a full-length arc of handguard for it in black. I was swapping up the theme on that rifle. Uh, so it already had this green furniture on it and it had a green handguard. So I went ahead and pulled the handguard off and started checking it out. I was like, wait, I bet I can make this work on that rifle because 
I'm not selling this to anyone. This is my rifle. If it's not perfect, I don't care as long as it serves its purpose. And this was a handguard that came on a Geisley rifle. And if you know anything about Geisley parts, that there's a little tab that matches up with the upper receiver on Geisley that had to be trimmed off. And uh, that's pretty much all I had to do. I also trimmed the length. This, this was a, uh, I believe a 15 or 16 inch, and no, maybe a 13, five, I don't know, a longer handguard. I went in and cut it off and I painted the end tan, essentially to match the rest of the theme. And I kind of faded it. I don't know if you can see it, but I kind of faded it away a little bit to kind of give it that little extra flair to make myself happy. Uh, it works, I, like, I, you know, there's a little bit of a gap here, but I don't give a shit. Like I, I, I just honestly don't care about that. It works, it's great, there is no movement, it's totally fine. And again, this is the Noveski, uh, oh, oh, I think they, they have a name for the, it's Leonidas barrel or some shit, I don't remember. But it's a 12.5 Noveski barrel, seven twists with a mid-length gas system. It's a .750 gas journal with a .08 gas port. Currently, I am running an Odin Marks adjustable gas block. That's just what I had at the time because I was I had messed around and used up all my superlative arms gas blocks and I just really wanted to put this thing together and shoot it. It has been fine, so I just left it on there for now. I will be changing that because the Odin Marks, in my opinion, they may work well on their barrels, but I have found them to be a little bit oversized on most barrels, uh, which I mean, you know, there's going to be people like step in and say, well, it's going to go in and fill in with crud in any way, so it doesn't matter. It matters to me. <laughs> but, I, but I also want that, I want that ability. Now, it, this barrel, I'm pretty sure it came with a gas block, but it was non adjustable. And I, I don't like that on six millimeter arcs. I want that adjustability to tune my system uh, very, very specifically to my system. So, again, I, I wanted an adjustable gas block. But I'm definitely going to be changing that out. Probably for support of arms, or maybe I'll try a different brand this time on this particular build. But it's been running fine after I got it adjusted where I wanted. Shoots very pleasantly. So I haven't messed with it for now. But that's eventually going away, I'm just saying. Uh, moving on, we have an armor spec uh, little mini arca rail here. I like the armor spec little arca plate because it's very skeletonized, cutting out weight. Because I, I obviously wanted to keep this one relatively lightweight. Like, to me, that's another just another benefit to a compact package. You're already cutting weight by doing that, so let's keep it even more lightweight. So cut out any bit of weight I can anywhere. I'm running a polymer, uh, the smallest Picatinny rail I possibly could get on there from Magpul. I'm running the, the best bipod in the world, the Magpul bipod, and obviously the 7.62 Ti from uh, Hux Works. As far as uh, performance goes, I've been very impressed. Uh, a lot of people get scared of short barrels for some reason with modern cartridges, as long as the twist rate is appropriate for the barrel. And a one in seven is just fine for this. Uh, I mean, it could, it could even have been a one in six and a half with as short as it is, but a one in seven is totally fine for a good across the board rifle. Performance, you're looking at about an average of one MOA in its current configuration. Obviously, I, when I shot those groups, I shot it with a bigger scope and all that shit and got the barrel broke in and did some test groups. And right now, with this configuration, I can shoot uh, three quarter inch to half inch groups pretty repetitively with the 80 grain EOD VTs from Hornady because I'm kind of in the middle of trying to test that. What it, what it does, what that particular ammo does, it's, uh, it's slowest velocities. And the best way to even start it, it's sort of started out at its slowest velocity out of a short barrel. Now it shoots fantastic. Uh, it performs very well out to, with that particular ammo, the 80 grain EOD VT, which is a, basically a varmint projectile that's of higher BC. It's like a G1.4 something or another. Uh, with this rifle set up the way it is, I can shoot our tiny targets on our range out to 800 yards pretty freaking uh, repeatedly until after about 800. And once we step out to 900, it, it, it starts losing so much velocity that it starts getting a little wishy-washy. Like your data starts falling apart on your traditional ballistics calculator and all that kind of stuff. The, the wind hose start getting a little bit iffy, but that's, that's amazing performance for a little bitty varmint rifle. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of testing an ammo. I would definitely probably mostly run, 
our 65 grain VMAX cow material for predator hunting out of this rifle. And when I start stepping up to deer hunting, I'll be running something a little bit heavier, 95s, 105s, uh, stuff, something around that nature. But I mean, that's pretty much it uh, for this video. Uh, if you're curious about more content on this rifle, please let me know uh, down in the comments. If you want us to explore uh, the velocities that, are, that this thing is capable of across the board with factory ammo, what we can do with our ammo, hand loading for it and all that kind of stuff. Just let me know, like if you're more curious about performance standards out of this rifle. Now, if you'll take a look at the website, alliedmunitions.com, a lot of this factory six millimeter arc ammo will have true velocity readings at our place using our standards and everything else, our rifles, real rifles, It'll have those true velocity numbers that we have found down below the description. I got a little extra note from myself where I went and tested the ammo and I left certain notes about the ammo, like maybe things to look out for. If you want to see, like, if that's all you really care about, just go check that out. I've been adding the 12.5 to a lot of them. I will be doing uh, more velocity testing as time goes on. So if you guys want to see more on it, just let me know. Uh, if you're more interested about the shorter compact platforms. Perhaps, like, now that I've had one for a little bit, I've had some plenty of time to get rounds down. It. People ask me, you know, is it worth it? And at the end of the day, I think I answered that pretty, in my opinion, I answered that pretty good in the beginning. It's worth it to me, but also I know, I know its capabilities. I know where that capability stops. I know my capabilities. So with that, we'll see you guys next time.